Exponential Growth and Decay, Concept 45. Okay, pause the video and write down these two functions for ex exponential growth and exponential decay. All right, these two equations model growth and decay. So if you maybe have some sort of a disease going around that grows exponentially, then this is the kind of equation that would model that situation. Our A in both equations is the initial amount. So however much you start with. The R is the rate. We need to always change that to a decimal. And T is for time. Time might be days, years, months, just depends on the problem. Okay, so first of all, we need to make sure we're always changing our rates to a decimal. The way you change a percent to a decimal is you take where the decimal is now and you move it to the left twice. So this is the same thing as 0.5. 25% is the same thing as 0.25. Go ahead, pause the video and find the, um, per, the decimal for the other two. We get 0 0.033 on this one. And over here you should get 0.85. Okay, here's our first word problem. The population of cronoids on planet Drollop was 500 in 2050. If the population grows at a rate of 20% each year, how many total cronoids would you expect in 2081? Round your answer down to the nearest whole cronoid. Okay, so this is a growth problem, so we're going to be using this equation. Okay, so A needs to be our initial population. Well, the initial amount was 500. That 1 just stays in there. Our rate is 20%, but we need to make sure to change that to a decimal. So move our decimal to the left 2, and we get 0.2. And then it's all to the T. Okay, so there's our equation. Now, we're looking at the population change from year 2050 to year 2081. So that's a span of 31 years, so we're going to need to plug 31 in for T. Now, if you grab a calculator and put that in, which I didn't before starting this video, so you have time to do it without pausing, we get out 142,425 0.78 chronoids. The direction said to round to the nearest whole chronoid, so we're going to say 142,426 chronoids. Make sure to always label your answer. If you don't, you'll probably get a point off. It's important to say what you're even talking about. All right, here's our next one. Sean invests $5,500 in 2010 to an account with a 2.6% interest rate. How much will he have in 2025? So we have another growth problem, or else Sean would need to move his money if it was decay. So he begins with $5,500, and we need to change our percent to a decimal. I know it has a decimal in it already, but we need to still move it to the left too. So we're going to get... 0 0.026 to the T. Okay, and it looks like from 2010 to 2025 there were 15 years, so plug 15 in for T. Okay, and we're going to get out $8,083.01. So that's how much money he would have after investing his $5,500 for 15 years. All right, given this function, we're going to determine whether it's growth or decay. So if you notice here, this kind of looks like my earlier functions, where 4 is my A, and then I'm multiplying by something to the X. 
But normally on the inside here, I have one plus or minus a number. So we're going to need to rewrite this as one plus a number or one minus a number. The way we figure out is we ask ourselves, is this number right here bigger or smaller than one? Since it's smaller than one, I know it's going to be one minus something. In order to know what number goes here, take one minus 0.75, you will get out 0.25. So here's our equation. It's the same equation, it's just written in a different format. Okay, since we have this, we know that it is decay because of this minus sign. So we've got decay. And the rate is 25%. Just like we made it a decimal to put it in the equation, to bring it out of the equation, we need to bring it back to a percent format.